What is up guys, in today's video I'm going to be going over some tips for controller players in Fortnite. As always, if you guys do find this video helpful, informative, interesting, remember to give a like, subscribe if you like some more, and comment down below what type of controller you use to play the game, whether it's Xbox or PlayStation. The first thing we're going to talk about is going to be that it's very hard to have ideal keybinds on controller, because for controller you want to take your thumbs off the analog stick as little as possible because like if you want a jump shot but you have to take your thumb off right stick to jump then your aim isn't going to be as good and then the same goes for you know if you need to take your thumb off the stick to crouch if you're playing build mode you know editing and your switch mode kind of come into play there there's just a lot of things you need to be able to do in fortnite and that makes it very hard to have ideal binds where you never take your thumbs off the stick and really the only way to accomplish this is going to be to either play claw claw is where your index finger is on the ax by or triangle circle x square buttons and then your middle finger hits the trigger and then your thumb stays on the stick at all time i actually play claw and i have since like 2008 a lot of people don't like it though it is kind of somewhat outdated at this point it's not as necessary as it was in the past and also some people just find it to be uncomfortable and so the other option is to get a paddled controller and that is actually going to bring us to the sponsor on today's video and that is going to be aim controllers they make custom controllers whether it's xbox or playstation that has kind of all the bells and whistles as far as custom controllers go paddles digital triggers or mouse click triggers digital bumpers or mouse click bumpers and then the same goes for the buttons these are just going to make all your buttons as like precise and um, as reactive as possible to like, you know, give yourself the best advantage you can get in game. I'm sponsored by aim. Their controllers have a lifetime warranty on the parts they modify. And I actually do have my own custom design on their website. If you want to go ahead and order that for the PS5, their PS5 controllers do come with paddles and adaptive triggers by default adaptive triggers are basically just where you can choose between either mouse click where it's instant you don't have to press it in at all to activate it really or you know go back to the default you can turn it on or off um but like i said check out their website it'll be linked down below and there's a lot of you know ways you can customize your controller the main things you're going to want to go for as far as performance goes are the paddles the mouse click triggers bumpers and buttons if you play on Xbox, I don't think they have mouse click or digital buttons, but either way, those are the main kind of uh, performance altering modifications to the controller. My code for October is $55 off. I think order is $199 or more. Not sure what my discount will be for November. It tends to vary month to month, but I would highly recommend getting a paddled controller. I play claw. I still use one paddle for sprint. And the reason why I said playing claw is kind of outdated at this point is because back in the day, paddled controllers weren't really a thing. So if you wanted that advantage, you kind of had to play claw. But at this point, it probably is more convenient for most players to just get a paddled controller. The next thing I want to talk about is that I see this a lot in my comment section or people bring it up on stream is that players set expectations for themselves too low based on their input method. And I feel like this makes it very hard to improve and if you just want to get on the game and have fun you don't care about improving that's fine not sure how you clicked on this video but you know it is what it is uh, but i see a decent amount of players in my comment section being like yeah i just can't win because i'm always playing against keyboard players or i'll oftentimes you know recommend certain weapons like the twin mag AR, and people will be like yeah i can't use this weapon it's only a keyboard weapon and it's very baffling to me to read those comments because i play on controller and so like most of my recommendations come from the perspective of a controller player but i see this a lot where people think controller is at some massive disadvantage and they can't play the game versus keyboard players and that is just not true at all so Fortnite is crossplay between everything. They have like a vested interest in making sure controller is viable because there probably is more controller players than there is keyboard players when you factor in like how much more popular the game is on console likely. But also, Mero is a controller player and he recently just won the FNCS Global Invitational and that, that was like one of the most stacked tournaments uh, of the year. Basically, the teams that played the best over the course of the year from worldwide got invited to it. And then him and his duo, Cooper, who Cooper plays on keyboard. But either way, a controller player won it and if controller was just vastly you know unable to even play the game you wouldn't see a controller player winning like the the most important tournament of the year and this was his sixth fncs finals win there's one fncs a season so he's won six fncs that means he won the biggest tournament in six different seasons now while being a controller player so like the idea that people comment on my videos 
regarding zero build public matches and say that they can't improve at the game because they play on controller is just baffling to me because even at the highest end there's certainly more keyboard players than there is controller players but it's not like controller is like you know unusable so I, ju I just think that it's not good to have that mindset if you actually do want to do good because if you're going into every fight somehow knowing that everybody you play against is on keyboard but just assuming you're going to lose to them I, I don't think that's uh, you know going to work out in the long run the next tip is going to be if i could give every controller player a single tip it would be that left stick aiming is huge and it's going to improve your accuracy a lot and this is very helpful in every shooter i've ever played in my life on controller except for maybe battlefield i think because there was some like uh spread if you strafed but like call of duty halo Rainbow Six, I think this game, like most shooters, left stick aiming is huge on controller. And basically what this means is that you're going to use your character's movement, like left or right, to make small adjustments with your aiming. And you don't want to rely on this entirely. Like you're still going to move your right stick as well, obviously. But you just, you use that left stick of your, the wiggle of your character to make like those small adjustments left or right. Because the, one of the main downsides of controller is with the analog sticks, it's difficult to make small adjustments. So, but when you use the movement stick to do that, it just works really well. And again, this is huge in every shooter I've ever played in my life. And one of the biggest kind of things that you can notice when watching someone who's newer to shooters is that they do just kind of like stand still when shooting. Um, and I, I highly recommend, you know, incorporating left stick aiming. You're going to use both analog sticks in unison to aim. And once you're able to do that well, your accuracy is going to go up, especially at like long range. But even in close range, I do like strafe aim a decent amount with my shotguns. The next, another big tip, and this, this, sh this should just go without saying, is that you need to find a sensitivity that you're comfortable to hip fire with. This is something that, again, you kind of notice in some players that aren't as experienced, or when I make my spectating videos, if I notice somebody that's relying too much on this, I usually, you know, n expect it not to go very well for them, is that some players, they don't feel comfortable hip firing ever, and, and so they either aim down sights way too much in close range, which we'll get to later on, or they put their X and Y sensitivity incredibly low to compensate for not feeling comfortable aiming. And so they play on like 20 X and Y or like even maybe even lower. I don't know. But this makes it very hard to be reactive in close range fights. You're going to have people jumping, crouching, sliding around. You're going to need to have a sensitivity that's reactive. But also it needs to be controlled enough to where you can hit people. Most good controller players have their X and Y sense between 40 and 60. I feel like somewhere within that range is good. If you're playing on 20 right now and you're looking at that and you're like, dang, I gotta go to 40, I you could just jump all the way up to 40, but you might also want to like ease into it, maybe go up to like 30 and then 35 and then 40. But like either way, I, I think you probably want to be somewhere within that range or somewhere close to that range. If you're playing 35 and it feels great to you and, and it works, that's fine. But like if you're 20 or lower, I would highly recommend boosting your X and Y sense up a little bit because I do think it is going to be very hard to track in close range with that. And that brings us to our next step. Like I said, hip firing in close range fights is huge in Fortnite. One of the things when I, you know, spectate people is when they're kind of too adamant about like aiming in in close range fights, it often gets them killed because your aim sense is going to be much lower than your hip fire sense. And that makes it much harder to react to anything your opponent does to throw off your aim. You know, if you're aiming like a statue, you know, you're barely able to move your sensitivity and then the person jumps, you need to make a somewhat large adjustment, you know? Uh, and then also if they crouch, same thing. If they're sliding around, same thing. You want to be able to hip fire in close range with shotguns and SMGs. And then that's also when your aim assist is going to be at its best is that, that close range uh, hip fire aim assist is much like more ideal for shotguns and smgs so when you aim in or when you're in like the act of aiming in you typically have less aim assist and so not only is the opponent's aim going to be more debt or not only is the opponent's mo like movement going to be more detrimental to you but you're also not going to have as much aim assist i will sometimes aim in with my shotgun if i'm like peeking from behind cover or a corner or maybe if the enemy isn't looking at me when the enemy can't fight back like if i'm on island and someone's about to land on me sometimes i'll take a shot at them with my shotgun while aimed in but you just don't want to have to rely on that all the time in close range fights and if you do find yourself kind of over relying on being ads in shotgun fights I, I would highly recommend trying to kind of break that habit um this next tip regardless if your mouse and keyboard or controller is huge and that is going to be pulled down on your right stick when shooting to counter recoil if you're playing on mouse you just pull your mouse down but this has come up a lot this season because the twin mag has 
a decent amount of recoil, but it's only vertical recoil, meaning it mostly kicks up. And so if you pull your right stick down a little bit, it'll, you know, keep it steady. And how much you have to pull down will depend, you know, it'll vary weapon to weapon, but also on your sensitivity. If you play on like a really low ADS sense, which is okay, uh, it's not as like detrimental as playing on a really low X and Y, but if you play on a really low ADS sense, you might have to pull more than someone who plays on a somewhat higher ADS sense. And this is another thing that is relevant in every game I've ever played. I've talked about this many times, but it's somewhat surprising to me how many people have had a hard time with the twin mag error because I feel like if you put this gun in like Call of Duty, if you put it in Battlefield, if you put it in Rainbow Six, people would be like the community would be raging about how easy it is to use and how little recoil it has. So I don't think, you know, the twin mag is not controllable. We're at the end of the season, so it doesn't really matter, you know, but just for future sake goes if you get used to kind of you know countering recoil uh, this is something that'll come up in future iterations of the game i'm sure there'll be guns that have recoil and the players that are able to counter it by pulling down on their stick while shooting will do better and again it's huge in every game it's not just a fortnite thing so if you came from call of duty you're probably already somewhat familiar with this if you are a controller player, I think you want to be very aware of the things in the game that remove aim assist. There's going to be like bushes if you're in a bush, uh, fighting around windows, the tree shrubbery. If you play controller on PC, touching your mouse and keyboard at all while you play the game, it can mess up your aim assist. Uh, but just in general, be aware of these things. You know, If you have somebody camping in a bush, you probably don't want to just hop in that bush and fight him because you're not going to have aim assist and the fight is going to feel weird. You know, If you get someone incredibly weak, and then they go into a bush and you kind of, you know, think, I'm going to push this, but I know I'm not going to have aim assist, you know, but I'm still going to push it, I think, and get the kill. That's a lot different. But oftentimes, I think where it's most detrimental is when you kind of don't have aim assist and you weren't prepared for it. Or, you know, like I said, if the opponent's full HP, that fight is going to be longer. But if you're going into a situation where you have someone really weak and you know you're not going to have aim assist, I, I think it is still somewhat playable there. I'm not saying you can't ever fight in a bush, but it's just something to be mindful of. Crosshair placement is another thing that's huge regardless of what input you play. This is just going to be putting your crosshair where you expect opponents to be and also where you will have the least amount of like adjustment to make. So one kind of thing, again, that kind of newer players struggle with or that can kind of be a sign that someone isn't as like experienced in game is a lot of newer players will be looking down constantly, like not a hundred, like not totally down, but they'll be like kind of, you know, at an angle looking down. I don't really know why this is, but it's just, it just is what it is. A lot of newer players tend to do that. And if you're constantly looking down and then you get into a shotgun fight, you have to kind of flick your aim up and then adjust like, you know, horizontally for where the opponent is. But if you're just always kind of keeping your crosshair at like what an opponent's like upper torso would be, it's going to be much easier for you to, to react in a fight. You're not going to have to make as much of an adjustment. That's going to lead to much more consistency in your aiming. So just be mindful of that. It's something that's really easy to improve. If you are someone that kind of tends to look down, I think it's just a bad habit that a lot of newer players have, but it's very easy to kind of break that habit if it is something that you kind of actively think about i just think a lot of people have never thought about it before and that's kind of the way it is the next thing is that is going to be huge is going to be to use a consistent inventory setup even if you're using the new quick swap setting and what i mean is like where the items are in your inventory so there might be times where you change it like for example i typically run shotgun in slot one smg in slot two uh, heals in slot three mobility in slot four and then ar in slot five right but if i'm doing just like shotgun ar then i'll put like the, the ar in slot two so there, it's not like you can't ever deviate from it but you just want to have somewhat of a consistent order the reason why a lot of controller players put shotgun in slot one is because if you play builds which i play both builds and zero builds every day the act of taking somebody's wall defaults you to slot one like just if you're on guns and you go to pick x and then you pick x a wall go into your switch mode to place the wall, and then you go back to weapons, you're just going to be on slot one regardless of what you were on before. So for that reason, a lot of controller players put shotgun in slot one, and then everything else just gets arranged around it. But again, you just want to keep things consistent. That way you can build that muscle memory. If you're kind of cycling things around and cycling what things are next to every game, that's not ideal. And even if you are using the new quick weapon swap setting, you want to kind of consistently put things in similar spots. That way you can build that muscle memory over time. Um, and I think even for that setting, you'll want shotgun in slot one because of the way it works. Uh, that setting can be good. I think it's mostly preference. I have another video about that that'll be linked down in the description below. Personally, I don't like it. It feels kind of delayed to me, but if you like it, that's fine. 
Another setting that you can change is going to be to turn vibration off. This is something that, you know, most games I've ever followed, it's like sweaty controller players have vibration turned off. And the reason for that is like if you're shooting your guns and your controller is shaking constantly, it just doesn't really add anything for you. Some people don't mind it and some people really hate having it turned off. But for the most part, I feel like it's only negative. Like it can only negatively impact the fight if your controller is shaking. It might not be the biggest thing all the time, but I feel like it can lead to your aim being a little less consistent. And so for that reason, a lot of players, you know, that care about their performance that, that play on controller tend to turn vibration off. And then the final thing we're going to talk about is going to be dead zones. This is a controller setting that is huge. If you've never adjusted this, it's how much you move the analog stick before any movement starts to register in game. And this is because like every controller is mass produced and not really perfect, but this really matters because I don't know what the default is, but the default makes it much harder to make small adjustments. You probably want to be somewhere within the 8 to 12% range. Again, it'll vary from controller to controller. And if you have an older controller, you might need to have a little higher than that. Because if you go too low, then you'll have stick drift where like the game just kind of it, your character moves on its own. And obviously that's not ideal, right? But just try to find the lowest dead zone you can go without having stick drift. Um, sometimes having too low feels like people don't have control over it. It might feel weird at first, but again, probably eight to 12, you want to be somewhere in that range. If you can go on 8% and not get stick drift, but it just feels off to you. And then you go to 10%. I don't think that's the end of the world. Um, it's just, if you, if your controller allows, I feel like you probably want to be somewhere between eight and 12, but that is going to be it for this video. I hope you guys found this helpful, informative, interesting. As always, if you did, remember to give a like, let me know down in the comments, what controller you use. And if you want to check out, you know, aim custom controllers, there'll be a link down in the description below for them. And my code is evolve Jake. It'll save you $55 off for the rest of October. Not sure what it'll be next month, but it'll probably be a good amount. And in the past, the black Friday deals have been uh, really good, but I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.